Welcome everyone, my name is Bleeker, and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 Minecraft maps of 2022. I've played 34 Minecraft maps this year, and I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to have all of these maps compete in a battle royale style fight against each other? Unfortunately, my lawyer says that's unethical, immoral, and illegal, so we're gonna have to settle for a top 10 list instead. Before we begin, for the Minecraft map to qualify for the list, I had to have played it at some point during 2022. The map didn't necessarily need to be released in 2022. I will be rating maps based on the quality of their builds, story, mechanics, and most importantly, how much I enjoyed playing them. Disclaimer, I am not a professional critic, nor am I really pretending to be one. I just thought it would be fun to do a top 10 list. Please don't sharpen the pitchforks and light the torches on me for having an opinion. On to the list! Number 10, Computery Stuff Remastered by The Blue Man 003. Brush up on your logic and memory gates and prepare to and, not, or, zor, and multiplexer your way through this puzzle map. Using these gates, we are to help Solar Tech Corp test their new security system utilizing Bluestone, a redstone-like material with an unlimited transmission range. Our goal at every level is to light up the little light at the end of the circuit. The map utilizes a fantastic difficulty curve that slowly adds in more and more of the logic and memory gates. Computery Stuff is a great map to introduce anyone to the basics of programming in a fun, low-stress environment. Was I low-stress when I played this? Absolutely not. Moving on. The command block work on this map is excellent, and is a great demonstration of how to take a simple concept, gate logic, and flush it out into a full and satisfying gameplay. Number 9. Jack's Death Course by Kuon. Mysteries? Puzzles, epic fights, lame jokes. Welcome to Jack's Death Course, where the only way out is playing along. Not every Minecraft map has to push the envelope and come up with trend-setting mechanics or complicated features or even ambitious builds. Sometimes, falling back on old-school mechanics and sharp dialogue are the way to go about telling a great story. This is the case with Jack's Death Course. For me, this is the little map that could. This map harkens back to a much simpler time in map making and knocks it out of the park. The redstone, mechanics, builds, they're all basic, but the dialogue is hilarious, intelligent, and witty. The moment to moment gameplay and puzzles are fantastic. The focus on fun really elevates this map above its more complicated and ambitious peers. I'll take a simple, but fun map over a complicated, ambitious, and grand, but ultimately mundane map any day. The antagonist of the map, Jack, is well written and witty. It's pretty likable. It really reminds me of Handsome Jack from the Borderlands series. Hmm. Jack? Handsome Jack? We'll have to ponder on this more. While he's taunting you through the map trying to kill you, you really don't know whether to hate the jack-o'-lantern or fall off your chair laughing. I found out after I did my playthrough of this map that this is the creator's very first map, and I am truly excited to see what they come up with for their next map outing. Before we continue on, these kinds of videos take a long time and a lot of effort to put together. So if you enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. It's a small act, but it really helps feed the mighty YouTube algorithm, which helps the channel out a lot. Back to the action. Number eight, The Horror Experiment by my man, Mick5. You are an agent. You work for the Bureau of Unexplained Phenomena. You've been living in the quiet little town called Little Stapledern. Your mission here has been to find out what happened to eight residents that disappeared from here, and all the information you have gathered so far points to the Grey Orphanage beyond the forest. Your story begins here. Given my history with Mick, is it any surprise that his map ended up on this list? 
Mick is a master at storytelling and an artist at map creation. From the very second you load into the map, you can tell it's been made with love, care, and several hundred hours of work. There's fully customized textures, cutscenes. At one point, there's a cutscene of you driving a car. I have never seen anything like that in a Minecraft map before. And it's a 30 second cutscene that took dozens upon dozens of hours to work out. But it really attests to Mick's commitment to quality. There's specially written music, animated items, some of the most advanced command blocks and redstone work I have ever seen, and a perfectly crafted, creepy atmosphere. The Horror Experiment is a Resident Evil-inspired map, and from the second you get into the meat and potatoes of this map, it's unnerving. All the mobs have been reskinned to be terrifying. But what I respect most about this map is that it manages to be scary without resorting to cheap jump scares. A jump scare is a release of tension, but this map holds onto and cultivates that tension all the way until the final cutscene. Plus a, a shameless plug, I, I did the trailer for this map and it turned out pretty great. Appreciate you, Mick. Number seven, Verticloid by Finger Map. In the realm of the void, you've been sent from the light box tests to try a new test chamber. Can you escape the chamber and overcome your limits in this puzzler? There are more tests, there always are. The tests on living matter are the worst, however, as they slowly disable and torment you and your ability to perform simple tasks. Do you give up or work around them? This is another puzzle map I really just adore, clearly since it's on my top 10 list. How can you play Minecraft when one of its core abilities is taken away? The premise of this map is how you would function if you lost your ability to jump. I, I get that the game is called Minecraft and not Jumpcraft, but I submit that jumping is a core mechanic. Moving on. I think that it is a beautiful question, and the answer is block puzzles. Lots and lots of block puzzles. The map maker really takes block puzzles to the extreme. You use block puzzles to navigate. You use block puzzles to power other contraptions. You use blocks to block lasers. The creator really took a look at the block puzzle and the problem of not being able to jump and thought, how many mechanics can I milk out of this? And there is a lovely ramping of difficulty as more and more gimmicks are added in. Since the ramping of difficulty was so masterfully paced, I was never once overwhelmed even during the final puzzles. The map texture pack is also super clean and overall has a very nice look to it. Number six, Evernight Chapter One by Enzo. A portal found in a deep cavern leading you to a mysterious dimension once ruled by seven gems but now the gems are scattered around the realms by an unknown force and reason, causing the realm to be stuck in eternal night. To go back to where you belong, you must retrieve the gems and save this world by conquering many kinds of challenges and bosses. And the mystery of this realm slowly unfolds as you progress. This map is beautiful. It has a plethora of RPG elements, eight drastically different bosses, each with their own mechanics, a plethora of RPG elements, a level progression system, RPG elements, loot chests with loot tables, RPG elements, wonderfully and uniquely designed areas, and did I mention a plethora of RPG elements? I sure hope I mentioned that. Evernight takes the dial of adventure maps and cranks it to 11. This map could be flushed out into its own standalone RPG. It's amazing. The builds, the bosses, the systems in place are all unique, well executed, and fun. At one point in this map, you wander through a petrified forest made mostly of cobblestone and regular stone, and it was beautiful. The map maker really knows how to craft a wonderful world. The boss fights, while extremely difficult, provide a wide variety of mechanics and locations to fight through. 
The upgrades and crafting system is super intricate as you have multiple weapon upgrade paths and armor paths that you can go down to best fit your playstyle. I went with the scythe and the AOE damage armor because of course I did. It was a very nice map, especially if you like fighting bosses. Number five, Unsung Hero by Thorvald. The story sees you, a mason from a faraway land, as the last chance to save the villagers from the undead that are spreading across the world. As one of the last remaining villages in the area is attacked, you realize you are the only ones still able to fight the undead. You embark on a dangerous quest through caves, mines, and dungeons in a desperate attempt to stop the undead. As it turns out, this was this creator's first crack in an adventure map, and it is near perfect. And I do not say that lightly. The builds are amazing. The mob's AI has been reprogrammed so that different mobs will attack you in different ways, such as dodging your attacks, or using melee weapons at close range, but switching to ranged weapons if you're further away. There is a system in place for chaining different weapon attacks to maximize damage. If you stun with one weapon, you can pull out another that causes bleed to stun enemies. There's a system in place where if you hit an enemy with a hammer, their armor disappears so you can deal more damage. As you gain weapons in the game, each with their own unique abilities, you immediately face an enemy or are put in a situation to use that weapon and its ability so you can get comfortable with the new mechanics. I also really like that the creator put in a minecart ride that was synced up to in the Hall of the Mountain King. They didn't have to, but they did because they thought it was cool and fun. And I respect that. The ending boss fight was also an absolute pleasure to fight, and I think one of my favorite boss fights of 2022. Finally, the environment and the builds are incredible. This map takes a lot of notes of good game development and applies it to map making. I am personally excited to see what this creator does in the future. Number four, Doomed Demons of the Nether by Sabagi. Time to bust out the seven string guitar, synthesizer and chainsaw, cause we're going to Mars. Doomed Demons of the Nether is a beautiful recreation of Doom 2016 in Minecraft. When you play through this map, it has the same high octane adrenaline fueled rush as Doom 2016. It is a beautiful map filled with puzzles, amazing structure work, and demons. Lots and lots of demons. The gameplay is super fast paced and extremely fluid. All the weapons feel like they pack a punch, and the sound design is absolutely top notch. There's boss fights and cutscenes, everything that you would want out of a Minecraft map. The most impressive part of this map is that there is no mod pack. It's just the resource pack and lots and lots of redstone and command blocks. The map is an absolute pleasure to play. If you think Minecraft needs a kick in the teeth or you're getting bored, you're going to want to play this. Number three, Worlds Collide by Tanner L. Worlds Collide is a Minecraft adventure map with absolutely no command blocks, no dedicated resource pack and no teleportation tricks and yet its commitment to intricate build design and visual storytelling is some of the best I have seen, ever. This map is huge, coming in at a 750 block diameter, and yet it is packed with adventure, quests, storytelling. You will never not find something to visually marvel at or go do. The map does a beautiful job at telling the story of the map, not through massive lore dumps, but through the environment. I don't want to spoil the story because I want all of you to go and play this map and figure out the story for yourselves. One of the limitations of this map, no command blocks, actually turns out to be one of its coolest features. Since you can't do any command shenanigans, all of the dungeons are gated by vanilla mechanics. At one point, you need to get into this underwater cave system, but you can't survive the swim to that cave until you get a water breathing helmet from the previous dungeon. And another dungeon, you need an elytra from the dungeon before. All of the dungeons provide something you will need to get into the next. And I think that's just wonderful. You don't see design like this often anymore. And again, I'd like to reiterate that this map is 
gorgeous. It is truly a visual spectacle to behold. Number two, Diamond Sword RPG Full Remaster by Mick5. Mick is really cleaning house on this top 10 list. Diamond Sword RPG Full Remaster is exactly that. Mick has taken what he's learned from Diamond Sword RPG and Diamond Sword RPG 1.5 and added a plethora of new features and content. The list is massive. 3D modeled and animated weapons and items. Custom sound effects and music updated with full stereo sound. Modified custom data packs now run smoother. New texture packs loaded with the map. New boss models and characters. New retextured mobs with models. New cutscenes, new scripted events, new story quests and items, new gameplay features. The map is a spectacle to behold. It is beautifully built on top of the success and lessons of the previous two entries in the series to culminate in the classic adventure you see here. Mick has spent somewhere between 800 and 900 hours remaking this and it shows. Diamond Sword Full Remaster harkens back to the classic hero's journey and adventure, heavily inspired by The Legend of Zelda, and you can tell. Mechanics that you are introduced to in earlier dungeons are carried forward and utilized all throughout the map. There's not a lot of one-off mechanics. Everything gets used multiple times to advance through the many dungeons and areas. And again, Mick is a master at crafting an environment and feeling. From the time you start to the time you finish, you feel as though you are on an epic quest. As I said back in the horror experiment, Mick is a master at redstone and command blocks, and all of it is brought to bear in this adventure map. This map is the map I use to review every other map against. Mick and this map are my gold standard for Minecraft maps and what they should aspire to. Before we go on, here are a few honorable mentions. Year of Blood by LGSC Team, a Bloodborne and Dark Souls inspired map. Recipe for Disaster by Bloody Duckers, a Spec Ops multiversal adventure. Number one, The Dream Recorder by Teddy Player One. Whilst trying out his new invention, the Dream Recorder, Teddy accidentally trapped himself and split his mind into pieces across his dreams. Fortunately, he's left you messages in the form of dream recordings. Watch these recordings to get clues, work your way through his surreal and racky dreams, and put his mind back together and escape from the world of dreams. Here we are at number one with the Dream Recorder. This adventure map has the most advanced command blocks and mechanics I have ever seen in an adventure map. Most of the mechanics in this map, I didn't even know were possible. The story premise of all of this happening in a dream reality allows for a lot of zaniness and shenanigans and plays perfectly into the seemingly random things and events that occur. A really cool mechanic that this map employs is when you are viewing these dream recordings, the map takes you out to YouTube to do the viewing. The adventure and puzzles are not only contained in Minecraft, but spill out onto YouTube as well. There's a really cool section where you need to find a color code to solve a puzzle, but the code is over in the YouTube video. Watch the YouTube video, solve the puzzle. The highlight of this map for me was a time trial flying through rings in this map and crashing through a clock tower. It was just so random, but so perfectly executed. The map is short, admittedly, clocking in it just over an hour to complete, but that time is jam-packed with puzzles, adventure, beautiful set pieces, the best redstone mechanics I have ever seen, really pushing the boundaries of what is possible in Minecraft. Well, that's my list. If there are any maps that you think should have made it onto this list, or if the order of the map should have been different, or if there's any maps you'd like to see me play in the future, please let me know in the comments below. A huge shout out to my very handsome bestie, Andrew, for mixing my audio and making me not sound like crap. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.